Step 1. Acquire an ISO image of a Wii game. To obtain mine, I used a homebrew USB loader hack to create a backup image of my Zelda Twilight Princess DVD. For more information on this, see the tutorial on that, or just use Google. Then, I attached my USB drive from the second USB port in the Wii and connected it to my PC. Then, I used WBFS File Manager to mount the WBFS partition and extract an ISO of the image I created to my PC's hard drive. If you're not sure where to find this, just Google for WBFS File Manager. Today we're going to take a look at Dolphin, um, which is a, it's a PC uh, Wii emulator. And of course, they, you know, they have them for Xbox and PlayStation and lots of others, but I'm particularly interested in Dolphin um, for the Wii. And remember we, you know, before when we set up Homebrew and the USB loader, we formatted our external hard drive with the WBFS partition. Okay, so I had a game here, Zelda, and I just copied it and backed it up under the hard drive just by clicking on the plus and USB loader. Remember that that has to go into the second port, the bottom USB port of the Wii. So we're just going to carry it over here and plug it into the PC. And we'll look at some of the tools we need and we'll look at actually playing Wii games on our PC. And we find uh, I got so many things plugged in here. Let me find a USB port to plug my drive into. Okay. All right. So I plug it into the USB port. And notice at first I'll get this little menu here, and it'll ask me to format the disk, and I do not want to do that. I switched to a screen capture to give you a little bit better image here. Again, just be careful not to click on Format Disk. Windows doesn't understand the formatting of WBFS, but you don't want to accidentally erase your ISO. So open up WBFS File Manager, okay, and you just want to know the drive letter of the WBFS partition. Although Windows won't recognize it, this utility, the WBFS File Manager, will recognize it. So to get the drive letter, just open up Windows Explorer and look at your partitions. Okay, in this case the one that says local disk will give me the drive letter. So browsing here, I can see that local disk is you know, given a drive letter of O. So in my WBFS file manager, I want to select O. And I want to click load. Be careful not to click format. Again, you don't want to lose your backups. So here are all the games I have backed up in my WBFS partition. Also, I have a FAT32 partition and an NTFS partition on this drive. It's a 500 gigabyte external USB laptop drive, 2.5 inch. I'm going to select this game here that I've imaged with the USB loader and the homebrew hack. And I simply want to extract the image to an ISO file to my PC. So from my WBFS formatted partition on my Wii drive to the hard drive on my PC on an NTFS partition. And I'll just put it somewhere where I can find it with the Dolphin uh, emulator. Okay, and looking for a place to save my ISO, extract my ISO to. Let's call it Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and save, and now it will extract the image. This will take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. And if everything goes well, it'll tell you completed extraction from WBFS drive. Next, we need to install a Bluetooth transceiver and set up Bluetooth on our PC. Now, if you have a laptop or even a higher end desktop, you may have Bluetooth already built in, so you could actually skip this stuff. If not, I went out and got me a pretty inexpensive uh, USB Bluetooth device. Just plugs into a USB port, and it will give your desktop or your laptop Bluetooth. All right, let's talk about some basic hardware. Um, You'll either need like a laptop or a desktop with built-in Bluetooth, or if not, I picked this one up at a Circuit City closeout sale. Um, I think it was like maybe nine bucks or something. Just plugs into a USB port, so make sure my system has Bluetooth. And you'll need that if you're going to use a Wiimote. Now, the Dolphin emulator will emulate a Wiimote, but if you want to use a real Wiimote, you're going to need some Bluetooth. I'm just going to plug this into a USB port over here. Okay. All right. So you can see it's just plugged into a USB port, and now that gives me some Bluetooth. And Windows should recognize the drivers right away. Um, if you're using Windows 7, it'll be on the HCL. All right. So it should find and configure the Bluetooth device and 
does here. I have a little icon here. There's my Bluetooth device. Next, get yourself a bona fide Wiimote or an inexpensive Wiimote knockoff, such as a Nyko. Also, get yourself an inexpensive IRDA bar or build one with two light emitting diodes, a resistor, and a 9 volt battery. I did it the easy, cheap way. Next piece of hardware, of course, if you're going to use a real Wiimote, would be a Wiimote. And um, you can use a real one, but they also have knockoff ones. In this case, you can buy them for like sometimes $15, even as cheap as $10. This is a Nyko knockoff Wiimote. So get yourself one of those. And then third, if you look on YouTube, there's a lot of tutorials about building these light bars. Basically, all they are is two light emitting diodes or LEDs. And there's an infrared camera in the Wiimote, and it it you know, lines itself up or kind of figures out where you're pointing it by its position between those two light emitting diodes, the LEDs. Now the Wii, you know, it, there's a cable and it, it powers the device. So there's power going to those LEDs to make them, you know, produce light, infrared light. But if you're going to use your PC, you're not going to have that. So you'll, if you look on YouTube, you'll find a lot of tutorials where people go to Radio Shack and you know, it's not hard. You get a 9 volt battery and you get two light emitting diodes and you hook them to the 9 volt battery with maybe a resistor or two. It's not a big deal, but actually, you know, the thing is, for what you're going to pay for that, I picked this up for about seven bucks from Best Buy. And uh, what I like about it is, well, A, I can be lazy. I don't have to uh, build anything myself. B, I don't have to worry about finding a case for it. And C, it, the battery is much cheaper. It uses AA batteries instead of a 9-volt battery. And if you notice, 9-volt batteries are more expensive. So it depends on how you want to do it, but I just picked this up at Best Buy. I'm just going to turn it on, and this little blue light there. All right, and at that point, ooh, I can actually see that on my camera. I can't see it with my naked eye, but I can pick it up in my uh, camera. That's cool. But anyway, yeah, so that'll be there to line up the Wiimote. So three pieces of hardware. I use for this project a Bluetooth dongle, um, a Wiimote, and I got myself you know, basically two light emitting diodes or a Wii sensor bar. Step 4. Pair the Wiimote with your Bluetooth enabled and activated PC. Okay, so I want to put my Wiimote into discovery mode to broadcast and I'm just going to simultaneously press the 1 and the 2 buttons. When I do that it'll start to flash. And you'll notice once I do that it finds the device. It's a Nintendo Bluetooth input device. Okay. Alright, so it's blinking and it's in discovery mode. It finds a Nintendo Bluetooth input device. I'm going to click next. And once again, for uh, this part, I'll switch to screen capture mode to give you a higher quality image. I'm going to click on the Bluetooth icon, and I just want to go over here and complete the pairing process. I'm going to add a Bluetooth device. Now remember that the Wii mode is now in discovery mode, so it's broadcasting. And my transceiver will pick it up. It will receive the Bluetooth signal from the Wii mode, and it's searching and searching for devices. There, it found it. It may take a minute or so to pick up, but you know, discovered it. There's a Nintendo Bluetooth uh, wireless controller, and I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And I need to pair it up. Now, typically, when you do Bluetooth, you have to enter a four-digit code to pair devices for, as a security precaution. But the Wiimote doesn't really understand that, so you simply need to choose the option to pair without entering a pairing code. And the Wiimote will have no problem with that because it doesn't really do that with the Wii device anyway. So it'll have no problem pairing with your PC without a code. And once they're all paired up, you're done with that as aspect and we can move on. And notice now it's just like, as though we're connected to a Wii. See how they're the one channel one buttons lit up there, the light emitting diode or the LED? Step 5. Go and download the Dolphin emulator from www.dolphin-emulator.com. Or just Google it. Now, fire that bad boy up and play some Wii games. Alright, so here I'm just going to launch the uh, Dolphin emulator. And I did have some configuration issues. I had to go in and set it up to use a real Wiimote instead of emulating a Wiimote. If you don't want to use a Wiimote, you can, you can just use the mouse and keyboard and you can have the Dolphin emulator emulate a Wiimote. But go into settings. You'll see all of the configuration settings there. You just play around with them. I'm going to load the image. Note, this first series of images is being screen captured while I'm simultaneously rendering 3D. 
so there will be lag and drop frames because my computer is not really state of the art, but the image quality is still way better than my cheap camera. After this short sequence, I'll show you a sequence with smooth frame rates, but low image quality because it's filmed with my cheap camera. And notice, you know, this is the typical introduction for a Wii game, you know, telling you, warning you about the wrist strap and hooking up and unchuck and things like that. And here's the opening scene from Zelda, and it, man, my computer is really struggling. Now, if you have a spiffy new computer like an i7 or an i5 or even an i3, you know, you might be running, you probably running circles around my, my machine. My machine's four years old. It was a quad core when they first came out. AMD fundamentally oscillates at, I think, like 2.2 gigahertz. And, you know, so I'm screen capturing at a high frame rate, plus I'm trying to render 3D, so that's the only reason that it's really kind of lagging here. But this is much higher quality than my cheap, nasty camera can produce, so I was going to show you this one, and then I'll give you a, a shot with the camera so you can at least see how it runs at normal speed. But this will let you actually see, you know, the, the graphics quality I think is superb. I think it's just as good as the Wii's. Um, and pretty good for an emulator too. You know, emulators can eat up a lot of. If you think about it, you're basically it's almost like running something through a virtual machine. So, um, you know, you're using. It takes a lot of memory. It takes a lot of CPU cycles and things. So it's pretty efficient, pretty tight for a game console emulator. <laughs> this, of course, is the opening scene from my favorite game of all time. Zelda Twilight Princess is, you know, if you own a Wii, this is the reason you should get a Wii, just for this game. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my cheap camera. So this will improve the frame rate and lag because I'm not going to be having to screen capture and try to render 3D at the same time on my computer. So to give you an idea of how smooth and fast the emulator runs, however, I apologize, the image quality will be poorer. One of these days, I'll get a decent camera. Alright, and um, right now I'm just kind of filming from the outside here. I'm using my Wiimote. And it's really hard to hold the camera at the same time, but I'll try to get the nunchuck. And I'm just kind of walking around here. So I'm just kind of running around. And again, this is my PC. This is not the Wii. This is my PC. So I'm just using it. It's, a, um, it's an HP quad core um, with 7 gigs of RAM. But it emulates pretty well there. Not really a whole lot of lag going on. Other than my bad camera. You hear my cooling fan kicking in.